Good morning, folks. Geomagnetic conditions are quieting. We've got more active regions on the way. We'll go over space weather scales and frequency, and we've got top science news starting at spaceweathernews.com. We find the last day on the sun with most of the activity around the limbs. Coronal hole facing Earth and will amplify the solar wind early next week. And as I mentioned, solar wind is calming back to ambient streams and geomagnetic storm conditions are ending. Could be a reverberation today, but that would be about it. Up next, it's a darkened 131 angstrom view to spot the flaring zones. On the left side is what I mentioned was coming. Brightness denotes incoming active regions both north and south. And folks, it seems there's some confusion on when you're supposed to get scared about space weather, so allow me to antidote this cod swallop. The radio blackout scales, 1 through 5, and it's the far right two columns of interest. The second column from the right is the flare ratings. People freaked out over the X-Class flare, but in addition to what we learned here about impulsive versus long-duration flares and the CMEs they make, we average about 175 X-Class flares per 11-year sunspot cycle. Above that, we average numerous X-10s per cycle, and an X-20 is expected about every other cycle. No. A simple X-class flare is not when you get scared. Maybe if two or three long-duration events occur right at Earth in succession, but X-10, X-20, now you're talking real power. So let's go to the geomagnetic storms. The confusing bit here is the 1 through 5 storm scales do not match the KP index on which they are based. Second column from the right, a G1 storm, the smallest, starts at KP5, and a G5 storm, the worst is KP9. We had a KP7 event this week, and while it is a solid space weather event, it's about 100 times lower than what is considered really scary. At G4, KP8, we do tend to see some major problems and satellite issues, but KP9 is the real scary mark. Let's not let those other channels twist you around here, shall we? Good because we're heading deep out into space to find a star-forming region that has one star of special interest to astronomers. It's got fluorine signatures in the surrounding clouds. It's the furthest they've ever spotted fluorine in deep space, and they say that those surrounding clouds were thrown off of the star itself in a little puff before something bigger, perhaps. We've got another one on the pre-seismic signals, but this time it's expressly more than an electromagnetic geophysical phenomenon. Solar forcing here and beyond that, it's the interplanetary magnetic field, the one that runs through the electric current sheet we've been discussing at the solar system and bigger at the galactic scale. And at that galactic scale, we've recently seen how its triggering of nova events is how the models and observations finally meet. And so, let's meet some of those recurrent nova as Hubble is on a scoping frenzy. While star-ending supernova happen maybe once every 50 years in the galaxy, the recurrent nova, classical, dwarf, and other categories go off at least a few hundred to a few thousand times a year. Now weirdly, in the article about this release, NASA says this one reminds them of the Eskimo Nebula, which they no longer call that because the moron snowflakes there think it's insensitive, instead of the honor, toughness, and respect-filled idea most of us have of the Eskimos, and no, the prettiest recurrent nova ever has no comparison. In a bit of very complex and higher-level astrophysical plasma science, a hugely respected group came together on the Parker probe view of crossing the current sheet. They not only strike at the reconnection and parallel field paradigm standing in the way of the plasma turbulence theories, but they spotted the ion steepening on either side of the sheet. This is one of the impactful aspects of the current sheet, and for website members who saw yesterday's Deeper Look episode on the topic, this is part of what could be triggering as a star exits the sheet. We're up to episode 88 this year. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.